agenda for today's session is uh, to talk about personal branding it is like how we can what is personal branding how should we do personal branding why is it important what are the advantages some do's and don'ts so it will be around this so i don't want this session to be very informal like i'm taking through the slides and i'm saying so you guys please feel free to uh, unmute yourself and ask or like add through my content what i'm presenting today let's uh, try to create an informal session and engaging session of course cool so uh, i have seen uh, many people they don't really take this concept of personal branding like you know in a very heavy way they are like okay it's it's it doesn't matter to us it's okay like we generally talk about brands around us like if we want to purchase even a small moisturizer for us or even a car for us we talk about brands but when it comes to us selling our skill set like being us a brand you we don't really think that is important enough to pay attention and work on it through this exercise my only agenda is to create some awareness around personal branding because we as an agency are selling our own skill sets to our clients being a developer or a marketer even if you're not directly like selling our individual uh, skill sets as a team together we're trying to bring some changes to our clients and you know giving them benefits around their work so it's important that we uh, realize the importance of personal branding for us so it's good that everyone knows the importance and you know how it comes to our business in general uh, the scale up consulting business and in case in future if you want to start your own agency it will help you there as well so it's it's not only associated with you as an individual but is also associated with you as a company where you working with or the people you're working with your coworkers or uh, your team members and everyone so that's how we'll start the today's session it is very important to recognize and that's how i'll be telling some ways or you can say some some secrets of of personal branding and and um, walk you through through certain steps you know on how you can create an outstanding personal brand for you right that's the agenda i i, I was a little late in showing this slide so we will start by meaning of personal branding what is uh, what is meant by the brand you and uh, why it is important the advantages of personal branding around you the ways in which you can build your brand so well i'll first start by what exactly uh, means of a personal branding what what is a definition a textbook defi definition of this so i found a very important a uh, very renowned quote of jeff bezos uh, the amazon founder if you you guys not aware of, of him talking about personal brand he says that whatever people say about you when you're not in the room shows your personal brand so it occurs to us like whenever we are working in a team always everyone is good uh, to our face you know when we are present everyone is talking good and positive things about us but what they say about us when we're not there like we're not present what are what are they talking about us at our back so that's what personal brand is it is a perception what we throw at people basically via our knowledge our skill sets the expertise that we uh, bring on the table the past achievements that we have had and the experience that we carry whether even a project manager or a developer or a product manager anyone everyone even a housewife so even a housewife will have a personal brand of her own because she has the knowledge of doing certain things she has an expertise in certain things her own achievements so it's not only about you're talking in a professional domain a person has a brand in general as well so we should be uh, taking this concept as a universal concept not only talking about a particular career like that when i talk about advantages so i've i've tried to create the pointers of this presentation of this discussion in a way that we are a part of an agency where we are trying to sell our services through our skill sets so i've tried to uh, bring down this conclusion that we can start from today follow these points and start creating our own personal brands and of course together work towards building the brand of our company we are working with scale up consulting so i'll start by by talking about <clears throat> the key advantages of a personal brand it's very helpful that uh, you know when you when you say my 
if for example I'll, I'll i'll take an example here when we were discussing about we should hire an seo expert for our team we were trying to look at articles certain uh, articles by seo experts and we used to say that okay i'm following neel patel or i'm following semrush and there are experts from semrush that i follow any domain that you talk about have key important transition in itself so it's a helpful tool for you to stand out so the very first important thing is when you are something when you are a brand in it yourself or you're working towards building a brand it will always help you build more connections it will help you create partnerships any form of partnerships whether it's a business opportunity for yourself or for your company you're working with for example uh, neeraj in our team was working with on an seo project with xy company if the company likes neeraj's work the importance of neeraj's work will also fall upon scale up consulting as a brand neeraj's brand will also grow and scale up consulting brand will also grow along with neeraj so it kinds of helps us in showing off what what is your x factor what is your unique factor what are your strengths so you should you should always be thinking in a way that uh, i'm not only just building my personal brand so that people will google me and they'll get my information no it can also be word of mouth it it should also help you in building connections you know looking out for prospects or clients in future so the second important point is again controlling your narrative so if if i am a, a freelancer a developer mm-hmm. suppose when i talk about this point for example see when when if someone is typing your name into any search engine suppose google so how the results are coming up is your responsibility because when you're creating your personal brand you have to build your online reputation in a certain way you have to fix it in a similar way when we started scale up consulting we wanted that whenever if someone is searching for scale up consulting what results uh, should be shown our website should be shown our uh, business site should be shown so all these things we were very aware of when we talk about a business in general like a business brand you know but we should also be aware of our personal brand in a way that what information about us is available on different search engines and we have to fix it if it is wrong or make it better you know to build it in a certain way to fix our online reputation so that's how it is important that you should control your uh, online narrative and it's important piece of personal branding and then we talk about the third important advantage it is you're able to show your skill set you you're able to sell your expertise in a way by by being online by putting the content uh, through the world like if i am a marketer for example if i am a if i am a paid marketer now every day i do certain tasks i ha- i take out learning from those certain tasks now i want to share those learnings with the world i want to share those learnings with with the beginner marketers or or even small business owners who don't hire marketing people but they want to try marketing on their own so in this way i have a chance that i can create content i can put that content out on different platforms different media platforms that i have and i can show them my perspective my value proposition that i'll be adding uh, to them if they are hiring me as a consultant or a freelancer or even if a company or even a coworker to me uh, my teammates so uh, for example in our marketing team we have different people here P- different people are doing different things so uh, it will also help my personal brand will also help uh, other members in my team they'll try to uh, they'll get something from me so that's how uh, i can demonstrate my abilities through my content and of course one point is common in all these three th- that we're trying to constantly grow our reach as well in the first point we are building connections we are trying to reach more people we are growing our reach in the second phase also we are we are trying to control our information that that is shown to people around so we are trying to show it in a certain way uh, whoever people are you know reaching us and the third is of course when we are when we are showing our skill set we are diversifying our uh, reach to you know uh, to more and more people so this is all win win situation you have to have a brand you're selling something you have to be out there in the world uh, because it's free it doesn't cost you anything right so now now i'll be taking you through the steps like 
how exactly you can build your your personal brand so before i move ahead i just i just want to take 2 minutes of your time has anyone any questions or any suggestions to share like if anyone feels there some disadvantage of a personal brand or you have you can think of certain more advantages of building a personal brand please feel free to to unmute your mic and you know share with other team members if anyone has anything to say i think the disadvantage would be to not build a personal brand in this this world in every industry no matter what you're in the more confidence and the more you can portray yourself as a valuable asset the more it will help you in any way you go and that doesn't necessarily mean with skills that could be with honesty or you know personality etc sort of things yeah exactly i can think of one disadvantage but i think it's outweighed by all the advantages but i'm going to i'm going to mention it anyway it's like if you if you build a good personal brand let's say like jeff bezos there will always be the bigger your personal brand the more people want to chop you down and bring you down so you you also have to be strong enough to to handle the criticisms that will come with it i right? agree with that yeah i also agree with that right i do think though that that's i mean that delves into a bit of psychology of you know the human psyche which is people generally or well, not generally but there are people out there who feel that they deserve to be somewhere where they don't and when other people succeed above them they will always want to tear you down but i think majority of people will outweigh that there's always a small percent they just seem to be loud if that makes sense yeah yeah i mean critics is always there like how how big or how small you are that's right and i think critics are good because even if they are trying to tear you down or if you have people saying bad things about what you may have achieved or whatever it is you can either use it or ignore it but you can use it to better your situation regardless regardless of them but it could always be you know ingredients for to improve yourself right right we should be authentic we should be true what we're saying and uh, we should hold our ground i think that that's that's best to deal with negative sentiments across cool yeah i mean that it's just not not everyone can do that so you know be careful while you're building your personal brand that you will you may get attacked be aware that that is coming right yeah, it's always yeah. to, it's uh, always good to be cautious in that aspect but i think uh it depends on the criticism right yeah it depends on the criticism right if the criticism is like if it has no truth to it then you should probably ignore it if you if you can again everybody is different not everybody can yeah. control their emotions they might react instead of respond if you're if you're more prepared for it and you know it's coming you can handle it better but if you if you don't know it's coming and then it comes you may not handle it well at all yeah that's true i've been on that side when i was younger a few times uh, you learn a lot from it sometimes those burns can stay with you though for a, for a long time until you can get past it but Yeah, it happens. Yeah. So I but again the advantages I think outweigh the disadvantages. I I think it's all right. Uh, one should not be egoistic I feel. I mean even though there are, there is a negative sentiment around you we should we should not be like oh I am whatever I'm doing is right. It's sometimes I feel uh, through negative uh, comments there comes out some something constructive. So we should be always looking out for for positive and everything. Maybe this yeah, is I, yeah which I feel. Yeah, I, I agree. I think I think the key to it all in general is being humble if you're a humble uh negative comments won't won't bring you down because if you're humble you're not egotistical and if you're not egotistical then it doesn't matter it doesn't affect you as long as you feel good about it for yourself you know what i mean right right anyone else wants to say something me anna krunal neeraj you guys please feel free to unmute and just say something i want that everyone should engage themselves Yeah, yeah um, like me and Nicole have something to yeah. say. Uh as for me I know personal branding and its importance especially as a freelancer. For example, Jane is an IT developer like if I'm going to market a team, I have to know exactly what his personal branding is. Um so yeah, I think that's really important for us to have some personal branding. Personal branding is just about identifying our strengths and standing out to find ways how to stand out among the sea of other experts in our field. So I believe uh, personal branding is really important. So I'll uh, I'll now move ahead in helping out with some secrets or some ways in which you know a direction on how you can build your your personal brand when you're trying to figure out like how you want to in order to build a personal brand what exactly should reflect as your identity 
like for professional identity or your personal identity it should not be an illusion you should first know who you are in like in the first place like be we try to be introspective and try to try to list down all your uh, whether your personal strengths or your weaknesses be it just try to not live in an illusion while you know going for building a personal brand it's always best to be who you are and show the world who you are so that's why we have to be asking ourselves certain questions that i've listed down here like for example which areas i excel for example jen is is a master i can say in coding that that is the area you know he's he's doing very good and uh, anna i feel she does really good in project management but it's not only project management that she can do maybe there are more areas you know where she can excel which i am not aware of she is aware of maybe she is not aware of so the point is let's try to explore ourselves and try to get the best what we can present to the world there are certain more questions around like how are we as a personality what are the characteristics what do people compliment me generally around like do people tell you communicate very well or you're very humble you're very kind you're very helping to everyone especially when you're working in a team what people tell you because it's not always how good you are in uh, doing a certain function like you are a good coder but if you if you are not humble you have a you know very very different kind of attitude towards your work and you know how you deal with people so you will have a difficulty in creating a positive personal brand for you so you have to list down all the aspects of yourself and you know then try to create a mix of your uh, strengths and weaknesses so so the best thing i i feel here that you can talk about these questions like what i've listed here you can ask your friends your family members your colleagues and they can describe you there are certain things you might know there are certain things you might not know maybe you are not aware of them but the people who work with you or your friends or your family members your colleagues are aware you know there are different facets of everyone's personality so and then you finally decide what you have to show like how you have to brand them in a best possible way different people might have uh, you know difficulty in you know finding this whole piece because everyone is different they don't want to limit themselves everyone want to explore everything so not only like a corporate brand think more like a personality what you bring to the table your personal strengths as well as your professional strengths your personal weaknesses as well as your professional weaknesses like a complete package so the best strategy is whatever area you choose let let it be honest let it be truthful like at the core and try to build it over time it's not always that okay today in 2022 i have figured out that this is what i my weakness is and this is what my strength is and that can't be changed set a goal for yourself maybe in the next couple of years or maybe next 6 months you're working on something and this will evolve you know this will change so you're also working on yourself to create a better personal brand for you in the long term so that's point number 1 point number 2 is your current stage for example if someone is a digital marketer right now they are happy doing what they are doing in their professional space maybe they also want to become a professional speaker or in the long term they are aiming at being a product manager just example so you can decide what you want to be known for not only in the current year or at the current time you can always work on yourself gain some new skills and try to forecast your personal brand in the coming years it all boils down to your personal brand today is more than just a reflection of what you are today it always adds up like we are finishing our schooling then we go to college then we take another degree and then we start working and while we are working while we are a fresher and we move to an experienced person so our personality changes we our different personality facets change we add on new things we evolve over time so this is how your personal brand is also it's just more what you are today you have to think as a road map where you want to go try to take it as an understanding whatever your existing skills are whatever your competency you hold you should always be assessing your strengths and weaknesses try to work on them try to relate to them in you know whatever next you want to achieve in this process you will be able to to uncover 
the skills uh, you know that you're unique at your speciality and you also get a chance to improve or gain certain new skill set you know in or become more specialized in whatever you're doing it does not have to stop here where i am today you have to be always forecasting all the domains whether it's a personal domain or it's a professional domain so if you're not good for example if you're not good at communication skills right now it does not mean that you cannot have a, a personal brand if you speak a certain language for example if someone is only speaking hindi he is he can't really speak english so it doesn't mean that you can't speak english in the next one or two years try working on yourself try working to communicate well in english and then you'll be able to build a personal brand in an english language you also have a brand in hindi It, we should not be controlled by anything or limit ourselves in that sense so i'll end it by again repeating my line your your personal brand is more a lot more than you know a reflection of who you are today you can always improve you can always gain new skills and try to advance for future try to uh, determine what you want to be known for at the end not just today a very important aspect of a personal brand is your audience so for example if i talk about scale up consulting it is a business it has a brand in itself it has some brand colors it has a brand vision it has a brand identity so in this way we have an audience also we talk about our target audience for scale up consulting these are small business owners small startups or even big companies or you know certain other agencies who want to get some some work done so we have defined an audience here for our agency in a similar way when you are crafting your personal brand you need to determine who you want to reach straight forward i'll take another example for example i am a marketing uh, person now if i want to build a personal brand i want to be called a marketing expert now i'll try to reach those people who want to learn about marketing that's one audience second audience i want to reach my prospect clients who want to take marketing services from me so that's another segment as a as a freelancer right a third segment for example nowadays you see a lot of people selling online courses so maybe i can uh, be an instructor i can sell my online courses so that's a third type of an audience so different types of people different type of audiences are always there you need to figure out who is your audience who are the people you're trying to reach is it is it you want to become an industry expert or you uh, you're trying to your only agenda of building a personal brand is to get hired by you know by a top company for example your your only goal is to uh, go into apple or google uh, these big companies so you're working you you're building your online presence to be get hired by those companies so everyone has a certain agenda creating this brand so you have to figure out what is your uh, goal the sooner you try to define the audience the better it will get for you you'll be able to create your story you you'll be able to draft your your pointers in a certain way so that you can reach your audience now a very 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 common example i'll give you i believe most of us use uh, linkedin these days uh, once or twice in a day like for example if if your goal of building a personal brand is to only reach hiring managers or recruiters so you know where are these people found where you'll find a hiring manager or recruiter you'll find them on a linkedin so you have to be on linkedin you have to update your linkedin profile it, it's very obvious no like 90% of the recruiters leverage linkedin or other social media platforms like linkedin the most common platform to find these high quality candidates for their job and so you should ensure that at least 90% of the time when you are searching for a job you should be on linkedin because there where your recruiter or your hiring manager is so you have to understand you know what you want to sell and whom you want to sell now for example uh, I, i'll take an example for of uh, for example raj 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 is a ui ux uh, graphic designer now when he's trying to sell his skill set uh, either by being a freelancer or through our agency like scale up consulting agency he has certain website or a certain portfolio online where he can tell his story through his designs and you know you know express them better if tomorrow a client says that you know i want to get ui ux services from scale up consulting so we have to show them something 
now rajas are experts so we are showing rajas designs uh, to them so in a way raj's personal brand is also benefiting the the company in a way it's both ways personal brand and benefit to the company and the company you're working with for example people like to boost oh i am working with apple so in a way you're driving apple's brand uh, to to sell yourself i am working with apple so both ways it it benefits everyone important point is we figure out who we want to sell like define our audience so that's very crucial in step while building your uh, personal brand coming back to next pointer how do you start there's always someone before you if you want to become a, a mentor in in coding field so there's always someone who is better than you who's already an expert in your field so how you can start the very first thought that comes to our mind is find out who are the experts in your field whatever field you are in right now and try to gain from them don't just blindly follow them okay i i want to learn seo i'll follow neel patel so i'll follow neel patel's youtube channel i'll follow linkedin's page i'll follow his website i'll i'll sign up for his uh, email marketing uh, list i'll do all these things i'm just following him but i'm not actually gaining from his content so you just have to pay more attention to what these thought leaders are doing how they are doing it then only you'll understand the juice of it try to examine like their methods how they do what they do try to imitate them that's the most basic way when you can uh, you know show or build something of your own it's always a classic example so if suppose tesla is building something before building something tesla will not just build a product it will do competitive research it will do a market research so this is the same step before building a product you're kind of doing a market research okay who who are all experts already exist in the market so let me let me create a list of all these experts now let me create a list of what they are doing like i should be examining what they are doing now whatever they are doing i'll do that to that benchmark and the next step where i'll be unique is i'll do better than them whatever thing they are not doing or they are not doing in a better way i can do it in a much better way and then uh, create a different brand so my audience will consume my content and then they'll uh, appreciate me for whatever unique offerings i have for them so that's important step that you should be doing in order to you know build your personal brand see at the end of the day it's 21st century it's influencer world everyone is doing a lot of stuff even a small influencer or a big influencer in any field everyone is creating content these days because everyone has access to these media platforms your only thinking is how should i create a content so that i can stand out if i am doing something i should be creating unique content it should not be just copy paste because for whomsoever you're copy pasting from whomsoever you're copy pasting that that guy is already attained a certain position you can't rise to the top following the same steps you have to do something unique you can take their inventory by doing a similar type of content but you have to be unique in your offerings you have to do things differently so that people understand your uh, work and you know they treat you accordingly so always research try to follow the experts examine them and then try to do that particular thing in a better way so that's the fourth step uh, which is very crucial in building a brand now at last we have done the very first step was we wanted to figure out who we are like as as our personal and professional strength then we tried to visualize a road map created a road map like uh, you know how i want to move ahead whatever fields i'll be working on what will be my uh, forecast journey then third point is i'm creating my audience list who will be consuming my content fourth is i'm already researching uh, on the existing experts you know existing personal brands i'm trying to look around the last is when you execute it like uh, when you see your final uh, output so it's the most important aspect of personal branding that you make sure that you're present online because these days everyone is on social media so your online presence has to be on them but you can decide what mediums you want to be it's not always that you know there are 
10 social media platforms out there i'll be working on 10 of them no it's possible if you have the like time and you have the energy you have the resources you can go on 10 on them 10 of them but it is also possible that you build from one platform for example linkedin you, you pick one platform you build your presence there you create your following there and then you can expand on whatever your situation is so it all boils down to how much time and energy and resources you can give in order to build your personal brand apart from your other day-to-day tasks there are numerous sources now everyone's situation is different now for example scale up consulting is an agency i'll take a business example for now now my target audience is startup small startups or you know uh, these uh, business owners and these entrepreneurs so i won't find them on instagram i won't find them on tiktok so i'll not put effort on tiktok or instagram i know i'll find these um, on linkedin twitter or reddit social media platforms so i have to focus on these platforms even facebook for that matter because the ceos or, or you know the top uh, top management that we're looking at they are not using they're not spending they don't have first in first place they don't have that much of a time to spend on facebook and you know all these things startup entrepreneurs they are very busy people so they are only present on like mostly active on linkedin or twitter or all these important platforms so my goal will be that i focus my 100% attention on these platforms try to maximize my uh, maximize the juice from these platforms on the other hand if for example i am a diy beauty influencer for example now my audience is on linkedin as well like uh, i want to target is on instagram as well but if you see a beauty diy or something like that while scrolling linkedin you'll be like what is this i mean why is this content here you won't appreciate the presence of that beauty content on linkedin because you know on linkedin you come for professional networking so you won't like that content there however if you find the same content on instagram maybe you end up liking that post or you know saving that post in your instagram uh, profile for checking on later because you like that post you like the content it also depends what type of post should go what type of content should go on what type of a platform and who are you targeting so that's very important aspect while while you're building your online presence for example if i take instagram or tiktok or snapchat these are majorly gen z or you know i call millennial tools like you know people uh, who are youngsters they're, they're mostly using these tools so if i am for example a seo expert i want to like uh, build my personal brand or i'm a coder or i'm a ui ux designer hardly anyone would want to see my content on a snapchat or an instagram or a tiktok because those the nature of those platforms is not networking the nature of those platform is enjoyment or you know relaxation and you know other things so you have to wisely choose what you want to post out what platforms you want to post out what type of content and your type of content for your audience so that's also very important and at the last of course i mean a personal website or or a, or a mini business website or a portfolio just a landing page about you know your information uh, you're highlighting your work highlighting your all the essential information that someone might need if they want to contact you so for example there are many tools out there like they don't charge you heavy uh, wix or wordpress these are like just free of cost uh, tools by which you can create a personal website for you add the essential important information for like your name your email like all the contact details that you would want if someone wants to contact you for for a professional advice or or a consulting assignment something like that so these tools can uh, you know help you create your a uh, presence so that's the fifth most important now i'll move ahead to another section which is do's and don'ts you can say or you can just take it as a note people always think in a very casual manner so if i take a common a very common example like uh, these big companies like apple or google they have their specialized teams for whatever content they're putting out on any of the channel be it linkedin or instagram or any other channel they have proper experts who write the content then designers who design that content in a certain way in a certain post type whether it's an image or it's a video and then they have a copy check you know whether this post is not derogatory it it doesn't sound negative to someone it is not hurting anyone's beliefs so there are multiple steps 
throughout those uh, you know while posting these type of content outside on these media platforms so we also have to think in a certain way whatever we are showing to the world it is important it is affecting our image because they will they will create a perception about us about our personality through our personal brand so we have to always try to show a trustworthy truthful honest authentic you know try to give what you want to show we should always sh- be showing a positive image try to share meaningful insights or inputs for example if if you want to be a ui ux expert then try to be creative try to share your own learnings don't just copy paste from another expert try to find what unique you can offer to them only then you'll be able to stand out because there are maybe hundreds of ui ux experts out there not everyone is following everyone so if you want to be standing out if you want to be known for your work then you have to put efforts you have to be creative you have to be unique you have to give meaning and value in whatever uh, you're giving to your target audience then there are certain aspects that we should be taking care of that we should not be uh, doing anything which can be hurtful to anyone we should avoid making certain type of mistakes not leave any derogatory comments or something like that on social media platforms because it only takes one comment to you know take down your image if you're building your image from so many days you're spending months and months putting a lot of effort just one single mistake can bring all that down so you have to always be thoughtful of what you're doing and of course you have to think in a way that be in the shoes of your target audience try to think whatever you're creating will that be useful for that because see on social media or anywhere like on all these media platforms the time span of a user consuming any content is just in microseconds you know we we scroll like this very very fast so if you're giving a certain type of a meaningful and you know a, a different type of a unique content that is adding value to your target audience people will stick to your content people will come follow you they'll they'll wait for your content. So there are certain YouTubers if you see, they have fixed days uh, like one video on Monday or one video on Thursday because they are providing quality content. Creating quality content takes time. No one is asking you to post 7 days a week. If you're posting good content, you're posting only 2 days a week, that's also good, sufficient because you are providing that value in just 2 days of work rather than just providing like a minimal value in all 7 days of posts so there are certain aspects to this where you can try to you know focus and always thrive to create something challenging so that you also are challenged in a way to think better to do better so uh, these are certain aspects we should be taking care of hey dear if you like that video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our youtube channel and turning on notifications so that you don't miss any of our future videos thank you